I'm Prashant Kamat, Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry, University of Notre Dame. Uh, today we are going to talk about quantum dot solar cells and tell you how they are emerging as one of the uh, leaders in uh, photovoltaics. Uh, we use benchtop technology to make uh, these quantum dot solar cells and our emphasis is on understanding some of the fundamental processes uh, involved in converting light energy into electrical energy. The research is funded by Department of Energy. Today, Joe Manser, a graduate student in our group, will explain to you how we make these quantum dot solar cells. Hi, I'm Joe Manser, a graduate student in the Kamat Lab at the University of Notre Dame. Hi, I'm Pralai Shastra, a postdoc at the University of Notre Dame. And today we're going to show you step by step how to assemble a liquid junction quantum dot solar cell. The first step in our cell assembly is to cut the optically transparent electrode to the appropriate size. Next, we test our electrode for conductivity. The back side is insulating, while the working side is conductive, as indicated by the multimeter. We then wash our electrode in a surfactant solution using an ultrasonicator. This is followed by rinsing with deionized water and ethanol. The electrode is then submerged in an ethanol bath and subjected to a second round of sonication. This scanning electron micrograph shows the various layers of our working electrode. The compact TiO2 is the thin black layer just on the surface of the electrode and is shown between the two orange arrows. This layer prevents short circuiting in our liquid junction solar cell. To deposit this layer, we use an aqueous solution of titanium tetrachloride poured over the surface of the electrode and then treat at 70 degrees Celsius to form titanium dioxide. After heating, the electrode is rinsed with deionized water and ethanol. Next, we apply the active TiO2 layer to our working electrode. This mesoporous support provides a framework for depositing our quantum dot light absorbers. Active TiO2 areas are marked out using a tape template and cast by a Dr. Blade technique. Using this simple technique, we can simultaneously prepare multiple active areas. The electrode is then heated to 80 degrees Celsius, followed by annealing at 500 degrees Celsius. The final tier in our photo anode is the scattering TiO2 layer. This layer provides backscattered photons for our quantum dot light absorbers in our active area. Again, we use the Dr. Blade technique to cast this film, marking a spot slightly bigger than our active area. The electrode is again heated to 80 degrees Celsius, followed by a treatment at 500 degrees Celsius. Just before depositing our solar sensitizer, our photoanode is treated a second time with titanium tetrachloride to increase the surface area and improve quantum dot deposition. Individual solar cells are then cut from the optically transparent electrode. Electrophoretic deposition allows us to deposit pre-synthesized colloidal quantum dots onto our photoanode. After submerging the electrode into the quantum dot solution, we use high voltage to drive the particles into the TiO2 network. Looking through the front side of our solar cell, we can see the brightly colored active area. This is because the majority of particles have been driven through the scattering layer and now reside in the mesoporous TiO2 support. Using EPD, we can deposit various sized quantum dots to tune the visible absorption of our solar cell, making what we call rainbow solar cells. To perform Silar, we submerge our TiO2 film into a cation solution, followed by rinsing and submersion into an anion solution. Using custom-built instruments and software developed in our lab, we've automated this process to increase our solar cell throughput. During the first cycle of Silar, we can see the white, unsensitized electrodes, and after five cycles, we can see the characteristic yellow color of cadmium sulfide.
After sensitizing our TiO2 films, we deposit a zinc sulfide blocking layer using Silar. This layer prevents back electron transfer from our sensitizer and TiO2 particles into our liquid electrolyte. For our counter electrodes, we use a copper RGO composite material cast on a fluorine doped tin oxide electrode. The counter electrodes are then placed in a vacuum oven at 110 degrees Celsius overnight. A parafilm spacer is melted on the surface of the electrode and the copper RGO composite material is allowed to react with the polysulfide electrolyte to form copper sulfide RGO. First, several drops of electrolyte are placed on the counter electrode. Then the cell is sandwiched and held together using binder clips. The final step is to solder indium contacts on the working and counter electrodes. After connecting the cell to the potentiostat, we're ready to test it using our solar simulator. Using software, we can monitor the photocurrent response of our solar cell. Upon illumination, the quantum dots absorb light and generate charge carriers that then can be used to do useful work. In summary, we've created a simple yet effective device for harnessing solar energy using only straightforward benchtop techniques. Such transformative technologies have the potential to play key roles in meeting our future energy demand.